Hello everyone. How are you all? Hope you are all doing well. In this video, we will learn the comprehension, grammar and vocabulary part of the unit 6 of the 10th standard English textbook SSC Board Telangana and Andhra Pradesh. On to part A that is the lesson environment. The first question, how are people's basic needs connected with the environment? People's basic needs are food, air, water, shelter and clothing. They get food from plants, air from the atmosphere, water from rain, shelter from trees and clothing from plants and animals. Plants, animals, rain and atmosphere are part of the environment. Hence, people's basic needs are connected with the environment. So this is how the people's basic needs are connected with the environment. On to the second question. Wangari Mathai has described the environment of her childhood in the interview. Is the environment of her childhood different from the environment you live in? If yes, in what ways? Yes, the environment of her childhood is different from the environment I live in. The environment she lived in was pristine, green and pure. Whereas, my environment consists of concrete buildings, modern equipments and pollution. In this way, our environment, or my environment is far, far, far different from the environment in which Wangari Mathai lived. On to the third question. According to Mathai, how are women responsible for the protection of the environment? In order to protect the environment, women were the right people to be approached as they were the ones who worked on the farms and cultivated crops. As these women who cultivated the crops who were responsible for the production of the food could do any of the wonders, it was very much right to say that women were responsible for the protection of the environment. On to the fourth question. What is the specific message of Wangari Mathai? The specific message of Wangari Mathai is to plant a tree as it will last long after we are gone and would remain for the future generations. On to the fifth question. List the transformations that Wangari Mathai was able to bring about over the years. Which one of them is the biggest in your opinion? The transformations that Wangari Mathai was able to bring about are enabling the illiterate women to give themselves an income, transformation of the landscape and the willingness of the people to fight for their rights. Among them, which is the biggest according to you? In my opinion, the third one is the biggest transformation. According to me, if the people start fighting for their rights, they would not allow anyone to occupy their land. Hence, it is a safety for their land and no one can occupy their land without their permission. On to the sixth question. Mathai said, when we plant a tree, we plant hope. What does she mean by this? She means that when we plant a tree, we plant the hope for the future generation because a tree remains as a symbol of greenery and prosperity even when we are gone. That is, human life is short-lived. Even when the, a person disappears from the earth, he is no more on the earth, the trees, the greenery would speak of the greatness of the person and it would give hope to the future generation by uh, giving oxygen, by providing the greenery and also regenerating and recharging the underground water. On to the seventh question. Wangari Mathai in her interview with NHK Radio often repeats phrases 
our sentences probably to emphasize her point emphasize means to insist to stress on something that is called emphasize for example referring to women group uh, she says they are the ones who plant they are the ones who cultivate they are the ones who produce food pick out from the text such repetitions and write them down and find out what she is emphasizing in each context what is happening in somalia what is happening in sudan what is happening in west africa here the repetition what is happening what is happening here emphasizes on the changes that have taken place in the mindset of the people in creating a peaceful environment the next repetition is we plant a tree we plant hope we plan the future for ourselves for our children for the birds we plan something that will last long after we are gone here the repetition we plant in the above statements emphasizes on the strong belief of wangari mathai in the rehabilitation of the environment with the planting of trees on to the next bit pick out the correct choice in each of the following we have allowed some people especially those in power to acquire a lot at the expense of our majority what does the phrase at the expense of our majority mean here is it with a loss or damage to the majority or by spending the major money on the majority yes the right answer is with a loss or damage to the majority on to the second one what was the implication of the growth of exotic trees such as the pine and the eucalyptus for the environment in which way it affected the environment is it that it increases timber business or is it that forests weren't able to contain water yes the right answer is forests weren't able to contain water on to the third question when women started working with mathai they learned to become very competent foresters or to grow and transplant seedlings yes the right answer is to become very competent foresters on to the fourth question mathai's efforts will inspire the people for what to stop wasting their resources or to use their resources miserly yes the right answer is to stop wasting their resources on to the vocabulary part replace underlined words in the following sentences with the words from the box that have the same meaning the first one is transplant then vegetation exotic negotiation restored equal rights sustain degrades equitably rehabilitation the government is trying to bring back normalcy in the right hit areas of the city which word in the box means bring back yes the right word is restore wangari mathai fought for the same privileges for men and women in africa what's the correct word that we can choose from the box which is equivalent in meaning to same privileges yes it is equal rights on to the third one i cannot hold my attention on any subject for a long time what does the word hold get in similarity with the meaning to yes it is sustain the poster is offensive and disrespects women here the word disrespects is near to meaning with degrades here the word disrespects is near to meaning to the word degrades hence degrades is the correct answer some people argue that the wealth in this world should be distributed fairly and reasonably among all what is the word fairly and reasonably mean it means equitably of 
after certain amount of growth the seedlings have to be taken out and shifted elsewhere for further growth so for this shifting the plants what's it called it's called transplanting here transplanted she travels to all kinds of exciting locations all over the world what does this word exciting go in similarity with yes its meaning is similar to the meaning of the word exotic the tirumala hills are covered by lush green plants the plants come under vegetation the judge advised the disputing parties to settle through discussion your discussion means negotiation the alcohol addict has to be put in a recovery center for becoming a normal person a recovery means rehabilitation on to the next bit read the following sentence and notice the underlined words wangari mathai is an environmentalist and has a lot of interest in ecology and now ecology stands for the study of relation of animals and plants to their surroundings environmentalist stands for a person who is concerned about the natural environment and wants to improve and protect it both the words stand for many words so they are called one word substitutes what are the following persons called a person who studies the human race especially of its origins yes the person is called an anthropologist a person who studies the remains of buildings and objects found in the ground yes the person is called an archaeologist a person who studies birds scientifically is called an ornithologist a doctor who studies and treats heart diseases is called a cardiologist a scientist who studies the mind of a person is called a psychologist a person who studies languages is called a linguist on to the next bit fill in the blanks with the appropriate forms of the underlined words it is everyone's duty to keep the environs clean with the cooperation of the citizens the government can protect the environment this is the other form of the word environs the government of the day should show its capability by providing good governance to the people the other form of the word government is governance wangari mathai was successful in transforming women of africa and the transformation made her happy we must restore our environment and always try to ensure its restoration natural resources in this world can be sustained if only there is sustainable management of resources wangari mathai is an environmental activist her activities led her to win nobel peace prize we were trying to respond to the basic needs of the people in the rural areas our response was well received by them in a developed country the development is balanced on to the next bit take the meaning of the word underlined as suggested in the context for me my greatest activity is to plant a tree said wangari mathai what does the word plant mean in this context does it mean a living thing with stem roots branches and leaves or does it mean put seeds in the ground to grow yes the right answer is put seeds in the ground to grow my uncle wants to build a chemical plant in hyderabad what does the word plant mean here yes the right answer is a factory 
applicants must have a clean driving license what does clean mean here yeah never done anything wrong he thinks that he should either resign or come clean come clean what does it mean here in this context yes it means as not corrupt rest your hand on my shoulder what does the word rest mean here support all our hopes rest on you what does the word rest mean here depend a publisher's note says all rights reserved what does the word rights mean here authority i want his parcel to be sent right away what does right mean here immediately he knew this was his last hope of winning last here means final the last thing she needed was more and more work what does last mean here the only remaining part on to the grammar part here our concept is non finite clause leading the movement wangari mathai won the nobel prize here in the first sentence that is wangari mathai led the movement she won the nobel prize we can identify the tense of the verbs by looking at them that is both of them are in past tense that is led is also in past tense one is also in past tense these are called finite verbs as they have the tense whereas in example 2 there are two clauses that is leading the movement and wangari mathai won the nobel prize the verb in the first class has no tense while the one in the second clause has tense that is without the second clause it is highly impossible to identify in which tense the first clause is yeah the verb with tense is known as a finite verb and the clause that has a finite verb is known as finite clause in the same way the verb that has no tense is known as non finite verb and the clause is called a non finite clause the non finite clause depends on the finite clause for its tense here leading the movement wangari mathai won the nobel prize here leading the movement is a non finite clause because we cannot identify the tense here whereas wangari mathai won the nobel prize here we can identify the tense that is one that is in past tense this is a finite clause now we should note that a non finite clause has no subject and we only can decide the tense of a non finite clause from the finite clause on to the exercise underline the non finite clauses in the following sentences born in london he became the citizen of uk so you can underline the part born in london having done his homework he went out to play here the part having done his homework is a non finite clause recognized by his boss he got an appreciation letter here the clause recognized by his boss is a non finite clause encouraged by his father ravi got distinction in his final examination here the clause encouraged by his father is a non finite clause with the tree grown tall we get more shade the clause with the tree grown tall is a non finite clause we left the room and went home to search for the books here the clause to search for the books is a non finite clause do we have the money to buy that car here to buy that car is a non finite clause we were not able to get away until now here the clause to get away until now is a non finite clause having read the book 
I returned it to the library. Here the clause having read the book is a non-finite relative clause. Here the clause having read the book is a non-finite clause. Jumping on his horse, the farmer rode to the market. Here the clause jumping on his horse is a non-finite clause. Observe how the following sentences have been rewritten to include non-finite clauses. Rewrite the following sentences to include non-finite clauses. So go through the sentences given above, have a practice and then attempt the exercise. After he had decided to become a painter in about 1880, he started to paint the studies of peasants and miners. Here, with the inclusion of non-finite laws, it happens to become like this. That is, having decided to become a painter in about 1880, he started to paint studies of peasants and miners. During the next five years, which are known as his uh, Dutch period, he produced paintings with rather dark greenish brown colors. This can be changed as, during the next few years known as his Dutch period, he produced paintings with rather dark greenish brown colors. On to the third one. In 1886, when he went to Paris to visit his brother Theo, he was immediately attracted to the impressionist work he saw there. He decided to stay in Paris and continued his painting there. Having gone to Paris to visit his brother Theo in 1886, he was attracted to the impressionist work he saw there and he decided to stay in Paris and continued his painting there. He was encouraged by Pizarro to use more color in his pictures and his subsequent paintings were bright and immensely colorful. This can be rewritten as encouraged by Pizarro to use more colors in his pictures, his subsequent paintings were bright and immensely colorful. After Van Gogh had moved to Arles in the south of France in 1888, he worked frantically. This can be converted as having moved to Arles in the south of France in 1888, Van Gogh worked frantically. This frenzied activity which was interrupted by bouts of deep depression and despair produced the majority of his most famous paintings. This frenzied activity interrupted by bouts of deep depression and despair produced the majority of his famous paintings. On to the seventh one. One of these, which is called self-portrait with bandaged ear, shows Van Gogh. He was wearing a bandage after he had cut off his ear. A year later, in 1890, he committed suicide. One of these, called a self-portrait with bandaged ear, shows Van Gogh wearing a bandage after he had cut off his ear. A year later, in 1890, he committed suicide. A lot is known about Van Gogh's life and his feelings because of the hundreds of letters which were written by him to his brother Theo and others. A lot is known about Van Gogh's life and his feelings because of the hundreds of letters written by him to his brother Theo and others. On to the ninth one. His brothers always encouraged him in his work because he believed in Van Gogh's genius. He was a person closest to Van Gogh. Believing in Van Gogh's genius, the person closest to him, his brother, always encouraged him in his work. On to the next bit, reported speech. Reported speech is nothing but indirect speech. 
in direct speeches you are reporting what you have spoken directly with someone to a third person that is called as reported speech now you can go through this conversation and look how it is reported and then you can attempt the exercise i go directly with the exercise write the following in reported speech nhk radio asks what is the one thing we can do wangari mathai says for me my greatest activity is to plant a tree i think that a tree is a wonderful symbol for the environment and we when we plant a tree we plant hope we plant the future for ourselves for our children for the birds uh, we plant something that will last long after we are gone how would this be reported nhk radio as wangari mathai what the one thing was that they could do wangari mathai answered that you can say replied that also wangari mathai replied that for her the greatest activity was to plant a tree she thought that the tree was a wonderful symbol for the environment and when they planted a tree they planted hope they planted the future for themselves for their children for the birds they planted something that would last long after they were gone on to the next exercise report the following dialogue so i will do one to one sentences that as i read the direct speech then i will go with the indirect man man says i am doing a survey on shopping habits this can be reported as a man said that he was doing a survey on shopping habits then the woman says okay as long as it doesn't take long here the woman agreed that is okay she said that i have reported as agreed the woman agreed to answer and said that she would answer the questions provided he didn't take much time then the man says how often do you eat hamburgers this can be reported as the man asked her how often she ate hamburgers the woman says never i am a vegetarian i don't eat any animal products this can be reported as The woman replied that she never ate hamburgers as she was a vegetarian and she did not eat any animal products. The man says, "Right. Can I just ask you a personal question? Are you wearing leather shoes?" This can be reported as Then the man asked her to permit him to ask a personal question and inquired if she was wearing leather shoes. You can also say the man asked if he could ask a personal question also. The woman says, "Yes, I am." The woman replied that she was wearing leather shoes. Then the man says, "Don't you think that's rather hypocritical?" This can be reported as the man asked her if she didn't think that was rather hypocritical. woman no not really the man says oh that's amusing so this can be reported as the woman answered that she did not really think so finally the man said that it was rather amusing 
So you can make it into a paragraph. I just wanted to give one to one answer to you. So I had split it. Otherwise you can write it as a paragraph. On to the poem part B or will the dreamer wake? Answer the following questions. Why does the poet say that these cups could be the last ones ever to freely live and to roam and mate? The tigers are already in the list of endangered animals due to rigorous deforestation and massive poaching. Poaching means illegal killing of animals. Deforestation means cutting off trees. If this continues, the tigers may go extinct. Extinct means would disappear from the earth. There won't be any tigers anymore. That is called extinction. So the poet says that these could be the last ones ever to freely live and roam and mate. If at all we fail to conserve these animals. On to the second question. She waits for all the life she is making. What does the poet convey through this line? The polar bear which lives in the snow is also in the list of endangered animals. As the mountains of snow are melting quickly due to global warming, it is causing a threat to the lives of the polar bears living there. Through this line, the poet conveys the message that the polar bear is waiting all her life for the rehabilitation of the environment. On to the third question, why does a thrush weave her nest? The thrush weaves her nest to hold her clutch and then lay the eggs. On to the fourth question, the child could sing the final whale song, says the poet. Why does she say so? Due to water pollution, the whale is in an endangered state. If this contamination of water is not avoided, the whale may go extinct. In that case, this newly born baby whale might be the last one to sing the whale song. That's why the poet says so. On to the fifth question. The poet says, this could be our last true moment. Is it true? In what ways? Yes, it is true. If the degradation of the environment continues in the same way, many animals may go to the endangered state and the endangered species may go extinct. This is the right moment to react to this problem or else it might be too late and we would be left with no other choice but to regret for our carelessness. Hence, it's our duty and responsibility to respond to this situation, to rehabilitate our environment, to conserve the wildlife. On to the sixth question. What do you think the poem is about? The poem is about the horrible condition of the animals and birds because of the degradation of the environment. It speaks of the essentiality to rehabilitate the environment. Essentiality means necessity. What does the grandchild in this poem symbolize? The grandchild symbolizes the future generations of the humans. Who is the dreamer here? Who is being referred to? The human of the present generation is a dreamer here. The person who is least bothered about the extinction of animals is being referred to here. Who is continuously contaminating the environment, polluting the environment is being referred to here. On to the ninth question. What according to you is a poem or will the dreamer wake about? Justify your answer quoting lines from the poem. The poem, or will the dreamer wake, is about the pitiable condition of the wild animals and birds because of the reckless exploitation of the nature by man. The line, this could be our last true moment, knowing the truth our choices make, reminds us to take the right choice to conserve our biosphere. 
on to part C a tale of three villages firstly Koko village Nigeria on to the first question why were the large empty drums placed outside Mr. Nana's house a chemical factory of Italy had dumped the drums containing poisonous chemicals near a stream 200 meter away from Mr. Nana's village some of these drums might have fallen down or rolled or been rolled by playful children outside Mr. Nana's house on to the second question what harm can the pyramid of the identical drums cause to the villagers the slimy contents leaking out from the drums and flowing down into the drinking water stream can cause health hazards and painful deaths to the villagers on to the third question why was the chief smiling as the lorries drove away the people who dumped the drums gave the chief a brown paper bag which might probably have contained money. So he smiled as the lorries drove away. As he got the money, he was happy about it, so he smiled. Was Thomas Agnew correct in his findings? Justify your opinion. Yes, Thomas Agnew was correct in his findings. He said that the drums contained poisonous chemicals. How can we justify? In the previous five years, 13 people had died with terrible pain and lots of children were sick because of the poisonous chemicals that spilled from the drums into the drinking water source and this had not happened before. This happened only after the drums had been dumped over there. On to the fifth question, why didn't the people move from their place? As the people didn't have enough money to buy a land somewhere else, they did not move from their place. On to the sixth question, there is a repetition of sentences with some in the passage. Read the passage again and write down the sentences and the function of some in each one of them. Do you find any other repetitions in the passage? If yes, mention it. Some of them are badly corroded. Their slimy contents of various colors, gray, dark green, bright orange, etc. leaking out down onto the baked African earth and into the stream. The word some implies a notable part of the drums. Some have fallen down or rolled or been rolled by playful children into the bush. The word some indicates that the number is not known exactly. Some are smoking in the midday heat. Here the word some denotes that there are quite a number of drums emitting smoke. Some are swelling as if their contents are bursting to get out. Here the word some tells that it is not a single drum which is in a condition to burst. There are some more drums. There are many a drums which are in a condition to burst. Some have already burst. The word some here means quite a few have burst already. The other repetitions in the text are they came on Wednesday. They took all day unloading them. They gave the chief a brown paper bag. Other repetitions are, We have asked the government to take the drums away. We have written to Italy. We have no money to buy land. We have no choice. We have to stay here. Here we have is being repeated here. On to the second bit. Choose the correct answer. Nana's house is. The right choice is with mud walls and the rusting corrugated iron roof. And to the second one, what is visible on the empty metal drums? Yes, 
skull and crossbone symbol. The important conclusion Thomas Agenio gave is that the drums contained poisonous chemicals. On to the grammar part. Here we are with the concept quantifiers. Quantifiers, as the name impl implies, are a type of determiners which denote imprecise quantity. Imprecise means not exact quantity. Just an approximate quantity is given. They differ from numbers or numerals which indicate precise quantity. If we tell the number, the definite number is there, the exact number is there. Whereas when you use the imprecise quantifiers here, uh, they do not give the exact number. Here you can see I have got some apples. Some apples, we do not get a figure how many apples are there. Right, we will move on to the exercise. Fill in the blanks appropriately with the following quantifiers. No, any, all, some, each, several and every. On to the exercise. No ordinary person is bothered about climatic changes. If we talk of any changes, people look at us as if we don't have any work. In fact, it is such a grave problem that every person has to think about it. All scientists feel alarmed. Alarmed means shocked, warned. All scientists feel alarmed because the ozone layer is depleting. In addition, some people believe that the global warming is creating climatic problems. But no single individual shows any concern for it. Some meteorologists predict that the world will get warm between 2 to 4 degrees Celsius by the year 2030. The scientists believe that every year some polar ice will melt and cause rainfall, increase in the sea level and also temperature will be affected. Some people disagree with the theory that the human activity is having an effect on the world's climate. All scientists need to monitor the Earth's atmosphere and all human beings need to care for the air, water and plant life that influence world's weather. People who disagree with the theory that there is a direct relationship between the human activity and climate believe that the world climate has gone through several changes since the earth and its atmosphere first formed. So, for any argument there is a counter argument. Every individual differs with the other in some way or the other. On to the second one, Ponimandure village. The people in this village were affected by chemical factories. Where, in your opinion, should the factories be built and why? The factories should be built in open and non-cultivable lands far away from human habitation. Why? If it is built near human habitations, it may cause health hazards to the people in the surrounding areas. It will cause health issues for the people. It is very harmful for the people. On to the second question. If it is necessary to build factories near the villages, what precautions should be taken to keep the villagers safe? If it is necessary to build factories near the villages, the chemical released from the factory should be treated before releasing them. That is, instead of releasing them as it is directly onto the environment, it should be made less poisonous, less reactive, less toxic, less harmful, so that even when it is released, it doesn't make that much of harm to the people. Then, special ash ponds must be there for discharging the chemicals and this must be disposed away from the human habitation. 
on to the third question the narrator said at the end there is so much they didn't tell you i thought what was that so much that was not told according to you they were not told that the chemicals would be dumped into their rivers and that the chemicals discharged from chimney stacks poisoning the fields and the earth below would make the land unfit for cultivation and that they would get ulcers and sores on their bodies on to the grammar part write the following sentences in reported speech that is the indirect speech i can remember the time she said wistfully when all the fields around this village were green and the harvest good this can be reported as she said wistfully that she could remember the time when all the fields around that village had been green and the harvest had been good on to the second one they said that factories need leather to make shoes handbags and clothes they said our men folk would get jobs they said we would all become rich so how would we report this she added that they had said that factories needed leather to make shoes handbags and clothes and that their men folk would get jobs and that they would all become rich on to the third one warboyo village ukraine on to the first question what measures should the government have taken when the nuclear reactor was installed beside the village the government should have given awareness to the nearby residents regarding the explosions it should have given the announcement as soon as the explosion occurred The nuclear reactor should have been installed at least 15 km away from the human habitation. On to the second question. What havoc can radioactive dust cause? Radioactive dust can cause nausea, headache, vomiting, hair fall, cancer, and even death on to the third question pick out the words or expressions or images that describe the tragedy caused by the radioactive dust the expressions that describe the tragedy caused by the radioactive dust are all three died all three died on the same day it was a ghost town there was no bird song no rabbit peered at me no horse neighed no cow endlessly chewed no one lived there any more the fields were barren nothing grew and nothing ever would again these expressions tell us the tragedy caused by the radioactive dust on to the fourth question What is the common theme that runs through the assorted narratives presented under the title A Tale of Three Villages? Substantiate your answer with evidences from the three texts. The common theme that runs through the narratives under the title A Tale of Three Villages is the harm caused to humans because of environmental pollution. the expressions they have been in pain terrible pain we have never seen deaths like that before they did not tell us that we would get ulcer and sores on our bodies two weeks after that all three died all three on the same day and it was a ghost town no one lived there anymore proves it I do believe this session was useful to you in comprehending the passages and getting to know the textual grammar and vocabulary. 
In case of any of the doubts, please text to me in the comment section. I will be very glad to clarify all your doubts. Do not forget to subscribe. Please share with your friends. Do click the like button. Thank you and have a delightful day ahead.